Welcome, Sundry Readers. I hope you enjoy today's story. Please remember to subscribe. It really helps me out. Happy listening. New Faces, New Friends by Arletta Richardson Chapter 10 Hudson's Proposal It didn't take long to let Sarah Jane and Thomas and the Graysons know the rest of the story. They were as appalled as we were. Nothing short of taking out an ad in the paper would undo all the damage he's done, Myra said. And nobody wants that. Some people wouldn't be convinced then, Sarah Jane observed. I've heard Gladys says that where there's smoke, there's fire. I think we'll let this fire burn out by itself, Len said. Our friends know the truth and the others will think what they want to, no matter what we say. If he'll straighten it out with his father so we can get our loan, I'll be satisfied. I'll lend the money to the church, Jerome said. We needn't bother to go through the bank. I don't know why I didn't think of that in the first place. If you had, this whole thing would have gone on without our knowing about it, I said. I'm glad it worked out as it did. Maybe you'd like to hear some more news, Thomas said. Colleen O'Shea has a new job. Thomas Charles, why didn't you tell me? Sarah Jane demanded. I just found out this afternoon. I took my watch to be repaired, and Mr. Jackson told me about it. He works in the back of the jewelry store, so he needed someone to wait on the customers. She began the first of the week. Did Mr. Jackson say anything about the loss of the ring? I ventured. No, only that he was glad the cases weren't broken. He admitted that it was carelessness on his part. He was showing the ring to a customer when the storm approached. They both ran out of the store and left the ring lying there. I'm glad for Colleen, Myra said. She'll be much happier in that job. I hope it makes some others feel better, too, Sarah Jane said. The ones that are such firm believers in the theory that the way things look is the way things are. I'm glad it's not always true. The last weeks of August were hot and sultry. It was an effort to move about, and I did as little of it as possible. I hemmed cradle-sized sheets and cotton blankets and wondered if it would ever be cool enough to use them. We heard thunder roll in the distance, but there was no rain in our area. A forest fire is burning toward Lake Huron, Len said one evening. Started by lightning, they think. Jerome sent a crew of men up there to help dismantle the mill. They can't hope to put the fire out. Dismantle the mill? You mean take a lumber mill apart? Yes, they loaded it on the freight trains to get it out of the area. They may be able to save some of the lumber, but not all of it. We can at least salvage some of the trees felled in the tornado, but fire destroys. I hope they don't lose too many homes. We certainly know who is in control when these disasters come, I said. Sarah Jane and I were both anxious to know how Colleen was enjoying her new job. She was happy to tell us when he saw her at church on Sunday. I really like the work, she said. I see everyone who comes to town. Of course they don't all come in, but I have a perfect view of the street. When I do have a customer, Mr. Jackson says my ring is good advertising, even if I didn't get it from his store. Colleen held her hand out for us to look at the lovely ring. It was the one we had noticed when she was at the house. It's beautiful, I said. I'd almost be afraid to wear it. I'm beginning to think that it's safer on than off, Colleen laughed. At least I won't run out of the house without it. It's pretty old, you know. It belonged to my grandmother, O'Shea. Pa gave it to me when I left home. If you ever need money, he said, you'll have this to fall back on. It'll bring you enough to get you back home. He knows I wouldn't sell it if I had to walk home. We'll be in to see you tomorrow, Sarah Jane told her. I'm coming to pick up Thomas's watch. As we approached the store the following day, Sarah Jane grabbed my arm. Oh no, she groaned. Do you see who is there? It was Hudson Curtis. We're too close to the door to back away now, I said. But I can't go in there and tell that man I'm glad to see him. He's not going to be glad to see us either, Sarah Jane predicted. It won't hurt us to say good morning. Hello, Mabel, Sarah Jane. Hudson looked so pathetic that I almost felt sorry for him. I might have known that all three of you would be here this morning, he said remorsefully. It's no more than I deserve. 
Didn't you know that Colleen was working here? Sarah Jane replied. Hudson shook his head. I thought I'd see Mr. Jackson alone and straighten this out. You've been dogging his footsteps too? No, but I wish that were all. Hudson sighed. He dug into his pocket and pulled out a ring. Mr. Jackson's ring, Colleen gasped. You took it? He was showing it to me the day of the tornado. When we ran outside, I guess I stuffed it into my pocket. I didn't find it until this morning. I thought I'd just come in and pay him for it, and he'd be the only one who knew how careless I'd been. Colleen went to call Mr. Jackson. Hudson, if I believed in the fates, I'd have to say that you were definitely not one of their favored persons, Sarah Jane said. Has this been going on your whole life? More or less, Hudson replied. My mother thinks I spend my spare time planning things to keep her upset, but I don't. They just happen. She doesn't know about this yet. She'll never hear it from us, I assured him. And I don't think Mr. Jackson is going to advertise it. Hudson paid for the ring and put the package back in his pocket. At the door, he turned around and looked at us. I suppose I might as well tell you. You'll know soon enough anyway. I'm going to offer this ring to Elizabeth Lawton. No one said a word as we watched him out of sight. Finally, Sarah Jane found her voice. My system has had about all the shock it can absorb. I need to go home and lie down. She headed for the door. Thomas's watch, I reminded her. Mr. Jackson went to get it, shaking his head and muttering to himself. Nothing ever happens in a small town, they said. I've been here less than two weeks and already I've had more nothing than I had in two years back home. Maybe I better leave before something happens. I wonder if Elizabeth is aware of Hudson's intentions, I asked as we started for home. Do you think we should warn her? Get a grip on yourself, Mabel, Sarah Jane responded. You know you don't want any more of Hudson's headaches. From all we know of Elizabeth, she'll handle it very well by herself. I feel sorry for Hudson, Len said when I told him the story. But I'm glad to know we didn't have looters during the storm. His eyes twinkled. And he could do a lot worse than Elizabeth as a choice for his ring. I agree to that, I said. But will she? Can you imagine her reaction when he announces his decision to marry her? We didn't have to imagine for long because Elizabeth paid us a visit that evening. Hudson had not let the sun go down on his resolve, but had made tracks straight for the mill office when he left the jewelry store. Naturally, I thought he had come in on business, Elizabeth told us. So I asked him to sit down while I went to call Mr. Grayson. Do you have to ask his permission? Hudson said to me. Permission for what? Why, to marry me, of course. Elizabeth, I exclaimed. He didn't. He did. No opening statement, no explanation, no... Good morning, Elizabeth. How are you? Nothing. What did you do? I just stood there and looked at him. My first thought was that I hoped he wasn't dangerous, but then I decided it was more likely that he was just simple-minded. Until that moment, I hadn't known that he knew my name. I never had a conversation with the man in my life, and he walks into my office and asks me to marry him. I could see Len was having difficulty controlling his laughter, but Elizabeth didn't consider the matter humorous. I hurried to ask another question. What happened next? I sat back down at my desk. Hudson, I said, the only thing I know about you is your name and occupation. How could you possibly think I'd want to marry you? We're about the same age, he said, and you're not that bad looking and you'd probably like to be married before you're much older. He didn't score any points with that speech, Elizabeth continued. But that wasn't the end of it. He twisted his hat around in his hands a few times and then came to the heart of the matter. Actually, it's imperative that I get married. My congregation is insisting that they need a minister who has a wife and a family. When the conference meets next month, I may find myself without a church. I know you would be acceptable to them because you have lived here for a number of years and you have a respectable job. Of course, he hurried to assure me. You won't have to work after we're married, out in an office, I mean. Len, I said, 
before you choke to death there, would you like to go and get some lemonade for the three of us? Len hurried into the house and Elizabeth sighed. Oh, I don't blame him for laughing. If I'd been looking on instead of part of the action, I'd laugh too. I honestly thought for a few minutes that Hudson was kidding with me for some peculiar reason. But he was dead serious, and he wanted an answer right then. I presume you gave him one, I said. Elizabeth nodded. I did indeed. Hudson, I said, there is no way on God's green earth that I would marry a man because his church wanted him to have a wife. Nor would I marry a man simply because he was near my age and thought I wasn't bad-looking. Does that answer any questions you might have? You won't consider marrying me then, not even if I give you a few days to think about it? There are not that many days left until the millennium, Hudson. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to work. I don't know how long he sat there, Elizabeth concluded. Because I turned my back on him, I wasn't going to speak to him again. If he had still been there when I left the office, I'd have locked him in. Do you think he should be running around loose? I'm sure he's harmless, I said. But he's obviously desperate. His congregation must have made it pretty clear to him that he'd better get married or else. And soon. Then let them find someone half-witted enough to take him, Elizabeth said. I certainly don't want to be responsible for him. He is in a pretty bad spot, isn't he? I said to Len as we returned to the porch after seeing Elizabeth to her buggy. It's too bad there aren't some nice young ladies in Greenwood. Someone I don't know. I can't think of any of my friends I'd wish him on. Tuesday morning, I took some berries to Ma Williams and stayed to visit a while. Tell me about the new teacher, I said. Where is she from? Why did she leave her last school? Her last school left her, Ma replied. They combined two districts and kept the teacher who had been there the longest. Mary lives with her elderly mother up in Crossbow. She was so afraid she wouldn't get the job that she was practically speechless. I notice, but isn't that a long way to come to school? Ma Williams nodded. Too far. Pa offered her $3 a week extra for room and board, so she and her mother are going to move into Rebecca's boarding house. He obviously saw something special about her, I said. What did I miss? Did you get the impression that she would be a capable teacher? Not at first, Ma admitted. But when she found out that Pa was considering her, she was a different person. She settled back in her chair and told us about her years of teaching. I've never had a child who was a failure she said. Everyone who comes to school can do something successfully. If he can't keep with his grade, I'll find work that he can do and be proud of. Maybe a boy won't read past the third reader, but he can stack a neat pile of firewood and keep the water bucket full. Some girls won't comprehend geography or arithmetic, but they can learn to keep a house neat and clean and cook simple food. I see to it that every child is pleased with himself and knows that he's done what he can and done it well. No wonder the children love her, I said. Who wouldn't love someone who made you glad to be alive? I hope she's still here in five years when our child starts school. End of chapter 10